Come on, Pastor Strader, Pastor Steve. I want a hug, man. Just, Come on! We, I don't know, this, we've known each other since 90, since before some of you were born. Yeah, 1983 or 84. And uh, yeah. uh, this is another Steve here in the house. And he, when did you come and work with you Pastor Strader? came Strader's? in 90. 94. He 94. came in 94 to work. So, he took my place so I could go with Rodney Howard Brown. But, uh, but I never forget, we had a band called Silver Wind. Yes. And, and you were uh, taking care of the stage setups and stuff. And he had these uh, parachutes. parachutes, these uh, big white parachutes yeah. with fans and everything. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. You're very artistic. <laughs> and so Bless you. since then, That's right. so this is like... 30, how many years? 30, about 35 years. Definitely before you were born. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe before your mom and dad met or <laughs> fell in love. But that's wonderful. Great to have the youth in the house. And uh, wow, that, that brings me to this uh, amazing, I mean, it's a relationship in the Lord is everything. In the faithfulness of God is, is here. So. Yay, Jesus. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. Lord, thank you. Lord, we worship you. And thank you for your faithfulness. Ooh. And let's give it up for the band. What a wonderful time we had. Awesome. Yay. Ah. And of course, uh, 19, uh, 10 years later, so 1985, so 1995, January, uh, if I could... Give you a little testimony. It was January 94. Yeah, yeah, 94, 95, something like that. But it was a, it was a camp meeting with Rodney Hill Brown and Pastor Strader's church. So nearly 10 years later, and uh, we've been at the time married uh, probably 10, 15 years, something like that, with my wife. And we've been married 40 years now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This year we're celebrating our 40th. And, and, uh, going through difficulties and the religious experiences, so I won't elaborate on that, but we were nearly going to a divorce stage, and uh, it, was, it was a difficult time for, for, for us. And, and somehow, I, some friends of mine from Florida kept saying, there is something going on in, in uh, Florida, you got to come. And I'm going, what, what's going on in Florida? It's just, well, revival, and, and you know, I says, well, explain it. Why, why should I go all the way from Seattle? Just tell me more details, because you know, I was living in Seattle at the time. They go, well, well the Holy Spirit is moving. Yeah. And I'm going, well, I have the Holy Spirit. I, you know, I speak in tongues. I, I have the Holy Ghost. And, and, uh, and then he's changing us. And I says, uh, well, you know, I'm renewing my mind. I'm changing myself, you know. I was like I was in a religious mode, kind of a maintenance mode. And, but didn't even realize it, you know. But my marriage was falling apart, and, and I was just hanging in there. So my friends kept insisting, my pastor friend. And finally, all right, okay, I, I'm going to come. And I practically dragged my wife by the hair. She did not like to go to any church meetings, any revival meetings, nothing. She, 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 was, she was, had it. And, and, I, and somehow I, I got her to come. And, and if, uh, she says, okay, I'll come in, in, in two conditions. Um, I want to get the, I want to get, uh, I want to hold the, the rent-a-car keys so I could leave and I want to get out of there. If it's, if it's religious meeting like I think it will be, I want to have a quick exit. And then also I want to have your credit card because her credit cards are, have limit for various reasons, but mine had a very high limit, like a, so she says, and you're going to be really sorry about that, about that, because I'm going to, I'm going to shop the entire week, you know, if it's, it's like what it is. So, so I go, all right, you know, I'm, I felt God was going to do something, but you know, so we, we're arriving Monday night, and of course Monday night. Who goes to church Monday night, right? Like, I mean, Sunday and and maybe Wednesday or something like that. That's the tradition. Monday night, I'm going, I don't want to go to an empty place and just so, so we were late. We just dragged our feet in late. And, and I'm arriving and there is no place to park a car. I mean, we had to walk, seems like a mile to get to it. Like everywhere you, you see a sea of cars. 
And so we, we come in it, and it's, of course, packed out place, and thousands of people. And I'm going, wow, Monday night. And so we, we were seated by friends of ours there. And as the worship was going, all of a sudden, my wife starts to cry. Phew. I'll never forget the first look of revival on my wife's face. Unforgettable. Because she was not prepared for anything for her to happen. Uh, she hasn't felt God's presence for lit literally nearly a decade, you know. She, um, she had a normal mascara, put it that way. So, because <laughs> nothing happened to her in church anyway, so why do a heavy beauty, you know, waterproof stuff? So just she had a normal mascara, the non-revival kind. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like two-lane highway, three-lane highway here. I mean, the face of revival. And my wife, I'll never forget that. I haven't seen that in, in years and years, uh, for her to cry or, or to, to be anything. And, and, and she was a mess. She's a neat lady, but she was a mess the entire week. And she did not want to miss a single meeting. And so she didn't have time to go to the, dr to the drugstore to buy a, a heavy-duty, waterproof kind. Now she's got the, the heavy one. It's like, let it rain, Lord, let it pour. I'm ready, you know. But that's, that's a funny story, but it's really the, the story of, of uh, our, our marriage, how this revival just uh, brought us together. So, Brother Strader, there's a huge fruit from you and your dad hosting, you know, the presence of God. And i never seen leaders to be such, to just host the Lord and not to control, you know, but to, to just let God have his way. And to, to me, that was like uh, new, you know, and I saw a new kind of leadership that wanted to let the Lord have his way. And, and uh, that's amazing. And, and so, but for me, actually, it was, was kind of, uh, I couldn't figure out really what was going on because, like, I thought my wife needed a touch, you know. Uh, <laughs> And I, I'm, I'm fine, but I'm glad God was touching my wife because she needed it, right? So, so uh, it was a kind of a chaotic night. And, and uh, by the second night, I'm going, you know, I don't understand what's exactly happening because the preacher uh, would lose his train of thought and stare in the ceiling. You know, and, and I'm going, are you going to talk or what? And it's like, I mean... <laughs> I'm a preacher, too, so, you know, I've lost my train of thought, and it happened, but come up with something. You can't just sit there, stare, and try to remember your sermon. You're just staring at the ceiling. And I'm going, man, what kind of, I mean, like, in my meetings, if I don't speak for, you know, 40 seconds or a minute, people go, you know, and nobody cared. Go, this guy's this, not preaching, and, and nobody even cared. People would be laughing. He never said a joke. I mean, it was like a strange meeting for me, as, you know, as far as what I was used to. And uh, others were running around and rolling up and down the aisles. Uh, he was, he was, yeah. And finally, when this preacher got his train of thought, and, and he started talking about drinking. Drink. I go, yeah, Phil. Like, well, well, listen, I mean, drinking is not the most appropriate thing to talk about in meetings because Christian meetings, because, you know, people get pro have problems with drinking, you know, and you shouldn't, I mean, it's not wise to talk about drinking, you know, like anything, but, and, and where is that in the Bible anyways? So he found a scripture that I have never seen before, although I was a preacher for 15 years, I've read the New Testament hundreds of times, and and there it is in your face, Jesus, not, not just not some apostle, but Jesus said, if anybody thirsty, come to me and drink. I never saw the word drink. I thought, come to me and, you know, get saved or something. But it, there it is, come to me and drink. It didn't say, come to me and think. It says, come to me and drink. And I'm going, drink? 
what, 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 what am I supposed to do with that? I mean, thinking, renewing your mind. I understand that. I'm doing that. But drinking, I don't know what to do with that. It's never existed in my uh, vocabulary, you know, in, in all my years with the Lord. There it is. And, and it's like everybody was enjoying this and understanding it except me. I did not know what to do with that. And at night when he started praying for people, you know, he comes and fill, 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 and comes to me and nothing, you know. And finally I said, listen, my name is not Phil, okay? <laughs> All these Phil's on the ground are having a good time. Obviously, they enjoy it, but I'm Georgian. Like, do you have something for me, you know? Obviously, and so it was really a kind of a becoming miserable thing for me because my wife uh, was enjoying it. I couldn't figure out what to do with this situation. And, and finally, Saturday morning, it was the last meeting, and he said, Friday, he goes, tomorrow we're going to pray for everybody, everybody. And I'm like, oh, good. So Saturday morning meeting finishes, so everybody's in the aisles, and of course, it's like, 8,000 people, 10,000 people. And so four or 5,000 are in the aisles. There's no room for everybody. So half the people had to get outside, uh, outside the church because there's no room for, for them to pray. So he prays in, inside and pray for me, nothing. So I go outside. You know, I mean, double dipping, just hopefully something will happen. This is my last, you know, not day. So I'm going outside. And there we are outside this big church in the grass, like, thousands of people whining like that. So he's praying for everybody and comes to me and nothing. I mean, I don't feel nothing. I don't even know what to do. Why should I lay in the ground? I mean, these guys are laying in the ground, but I, I don't understand. So meanwhile, a helicopter is going over our heads, and it's, a, it's an emergency helicopter, and seeing thousands of bodies <laughs> Rolling and, and so they, they assume it was the emergency of some problem, maybe poison gas or something happened. So thousands of bodies are you know, suffering. And so it's radio to the ambulances. And practically every ambulance and fire truck in central Florida was within minutes arriving in a parking lot. I'm not exaggerating, in a parking lot of carpenters. <laughs> Ooh, you know, you, 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 you know, the, the, the ambulances. And, and it's like, I'm the only one standing, you know. So all they're rushing. These guys are rushing to help all these bodies and people. I felt like saying, officer, don't worry about these guys. Take me. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm in trouble. These guys are okay, okay? Don't worry about this. <laughs> I mean, this is a true story. The next day, it was a helicopter shot of all these thousands of bodies. It was on the front page in the Lake Florida newspaper. Holy Lakeland. And, and that was my first week encounter with, actually, it was a miserable time. I didn't get what was going on. But I was happy, at least my wife was getting touched and rocked and, you know. Actually, by, by Thursday, I didn't even want to go to church. I was like, I don't want to go. We're going to go, let's go to church. I go, you go to church. I, I'm fine. I'll stay in a hotel room. I'll take a, take a night off. And because I'm frustrated. And she goes, oh, yes, we're going to church. I go, wait a minute. I've been dragging you to church for the last 10 years, okay? <laughs> now I'm going to, you go. I'm glad you want to go. You go. She goes, oh, I see what's going on. <laughs> I go, what? She says, I'll take care of it. And she, so she, she claps her hand and says, in the name of Jesus, leave my husband alone. And she's casting demons yeah. at him. And I'm going, Amen. what? She was backslidden. And, and now in four days, I'm the one who brought her here. And she's casting demons out of me. I don't believe it. But she's jumping on the bed like, 12 years old in a hotel room. See, I love it. I love this warfare. The demons obey me. She says, out of room now. Bang, you know. She said later there was little creatures talking to me. And, and you know, I, I was just, I mean, the whole thing was just totally, it's like, 
can't describe to you. And, 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 and that got me on a, on a quest and a hunger for more of God because I, I didn't realize that I had backslidden myself. You know, I mean, when you, when you, when you become religious, the thing is you, you don't even know it. And you, and you think everybody's wrong except you or stuff like that. And, and my wife is wrong. She's having the problem. I'm fine. That was my situation. And it took her complete turnaround to get me to want to be like that. And I says, Lord, I want to be like that. I want, I want to be like my wife now. I mean, she's like, she's, uh, uh, we go back to Seattle and any time it can happen. She's just washing dishes all of a sudden. Boom, she's in the floor rolling and laughing. And we didn't need a map for a while because her hair, long hair was just <laughs> mapping the floor. Woo, 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 woo. And I mean, it was all good, right? But it's just me. I'm like, God, can I have a little bit of that? Like, you know, so just the hunger. Because, I mean, I've got every videotape of this, watching it all night and, and, and just hungry. And finally, nine months of this misery, you know, hunger for more, but not getting it. And I couldn't figure out what it is. Finally, we're in Hawaii, and uh, where Rodney Habran is having meetings in Hawaii for two weeks, at least, or three weeks, and all over. And, and the reason we went, I went there, because part of it, it was, he's such a big guy. He's lost weight now, but he was a huge guy, and, and always, always big meetings. And, and, and I, I was intimidated by that. I thought, okay, so unless, unless, I have, unless I'm big like that, and with low voice and big meetings, I, I, I can't get to it or something. I mean, it was, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And, and uh, in Hawaii, when I heard he's going to Hawaii, I, I know Hawaii, I go there all the time, and I know all the pastors pretty much that, that the meetings were, were at. And they were not very big churches, so, except this one in, in uh, James Morocco's church was large. But the rest of them were small places, and I'm, I'm friends with the pastors. So I thought, okay, I'll have my pastor friends, and we're going to hang out, and I can relax, and, and I may not be intimidated, you know. And so sure enough, we can hang out, and, and, uh, and then one night, uh, Rodney asked me to, to play the violin, and man... I played it, and the, went, the place went berserk. It's like for 15 minutes, it was deafening screams and shout, and everybody's having a good time except me. And I'm going, okay, at least everybody's having a good time. Feeling good, that's great. You know, and so two weeks go by, meetings after meetings. I don't feel nothing. So the last meeting now in Kona, and um, uh, I'm like front row somewhere sitting and waiting. Finally, he says, it didn't. okay, now we're going to start praying for people. I'm going, okay, good. This is my chance. This is my time. It's the last meeting. And just before he starts praying, he, he starts staggering and falls on the ground. I'm going, oh, no, you're not going to do this to me. I mean, I feel like kicking him. I get up and do your thing. Pray for me. Do something because this is... My last chance, you know. No, he's out. Lights out. He's gone. And make things work, his wife, Adonica, grabs the microphone, and she started talking. Now, she's a South African, has an accent. I'm Bulgarian, and I don't quite understand what she's saying. I go, what? What is she saying? And, what did, and, and I'm striving, strenuous to figure out what exactly, because maybe I'm, I was thinking I'm missing something because obviously I'm not getting something. So what is it? So I'm just really straining. Like, Baby, what did she say? My wife goes, I don't know. I don't care. Like she, she's totally <laughs> drunk. And, and I'm, I'm really straining. And all of a sudden I start laughing at myself basically because I'm, George, you're funny. You know what I'm saying? You're spending money going out there. You're intense. You want this thing and just like you're really, really intense. And I'm laughing at myself, but then I'm going, okay, stop laughing. And I really feel like crying, really, but I don't want to laugh, but I'm laughing. Okay, shut up, stop. And all of a sudden I realize I cannot stop laughing. I'm going, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, why am I laughing? I feel like crying, but I'm laughing. And laughing, and all of a sudden it hits me. This is like nine months later after. It hits me that I'm not laughing, but the Holy Ghost is laughing, using my belly to laugh. He's laughing because I don't feel like laughing. Ha, ha, ha. 
And all of a sudden, it hit me. It's happening to me. Ah! <laughs> and I says, look, Lord, I don't want to just a little laughing. Like, I want the whole thing. I want, I want the whole, everything to change. I want it all. Ha, ha, ha. And all of a sudden, I felt like, like God put his thumb on my belly button and pushed it. And I've visually, I, I, I saw myself like, like a blender. My insides like a blender. And he, like when he pushed the button, like, you know those blenders for the juices or the puree, you know, the puree button, the top, the red button, the fastest. I mean, it spun. I begin to spin inside. Everything inside me started to spinning. And, 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 and he says, I'm here to stay. I heard him say, I'm here to stay. Spin with me. Go with me. And woo, I'm telling you, every, it's like I feel like a turbine. My, uh, the Holy Ghost start moving. Like, you know, it says, do, do, da, dunamos, dunamos, that's, that's what, dun, I don't know if you know what dynamos are. They spin. That's how electricity comes. It spin, you know. And, and when I was a kid, we had these bikes, and old-fashioned bikes had the little gadget to where you hit the tire, the and, and it spins and makes light, so you could, so it creates light. So I, I felt like I'm this dynamo, and he's spinning me, spinning me, spinning. And then my whole body, like, I, I, my, my hands begin to spin like a, like a windmill. I start spinning and swirling and twirling around, and it felt so good. <laughs> so, I got set free from this religious, whatever that was, I don't know, but get stuck on something and I got spinning and spinning and and literally uh, it became like a violent spin violent uh, felt so good and for the next six months it, it lasted like every time I think about Jesus I'm start spinning and my hands start flowing and I couldn't I was not making it up it wasn't something because you know it's weird to do that you know but but all of a sudden there's some Bible, uh, like uh, somebody brought a teaching that when, when you praise the Lord, one way of praising is to wave your hands violently. Another one is tehillah or, or halal to spin. I mean, I never, know, never knew these things. And now I'm spinning and swirling around. I mean, I literally had to go to the hotels because uh, I love praying at night. And I always go out at night and for an hour or whatever and hang out with the Lord. But now I'm spinning. It's weird, but I love it. I'm enjoying it. But it looks weird. In fact, the security car would come in the back of the hotel in the parking lot. And I'm going, oh, oh. And I'm going, I know it looks weird, but I feel good. Office, I don't know what to tell you. Says, Sir, what, what are you doing? Says, what do you look like I'm doing? I'm praying. He's like, really? And it was like, I had to explain during check-in, and like I said, listen, uh, I like walking out uh, at night, so I'm okay. You know, like if I look like I'm not, I'm just telling them, I'm, I'm not weird, I'm okay. I had to prepare the people because I knew what would happen. The moment I feel the presence of God, I start spinning and I'm swirling. And sometimes there was so much energy flowing through me, I had to hold on to the electric pole or I had to hold on to something because this... This energy, it go to, I mean, this was before laying in the hands. It was not popular the, in my circles anyway. So we, we don't do lay hands. And now I get it because it's just you got to lay hands, got to let it go. You got to have somebody to get healed or something. <laughs> Whoa. Woo. Woo. Jesus. Woo. Spit us, Lord. This guy was part of that, the Rock Church in, in, in uh, Dover. Over in Dover. Over in Dover. <laughs> he was one of these crazy guys. Looked like on dope or some drug. They, <gasps> like, and holy smoke. And I, I joined that, and it was, it was not made, it was real. It was real. And it's still here, and I'm just releasing this 
Holy Ghost tonight. S set you free. I'm going to get the joy fiddle in a moment. We're going to go for it. Pastor says, I have one rule tonight. Have fun. have fun. And that word fun was never part of my vocabulary when it comes to Christian meetings or anything. It's got to be serious about Jesus, you know. And, and, and I, I heard that fun word used in context of meetings from John Arnott. Because after running, I needed more. So I used to go to Toronto and preach there, and I heard about a move of God there. It was an extension of that. This is part of the same thing. And every night for, for 12 years, I think, we went out. Every night. And something like three or four million people went through the doors of that vineyard church. People hungry for God. They had to uh, carry them. Some of them on wheelchairs back to the airplanes because they were kept missing their flights because they can't get to the airport. They're so drunk and so on the floor. And, and that's why I met he Heidi Baker. She was on the floor. Uh, but first she was offended, just kind of like me. I was kind of like offended at first, but then she got, she got touched and never forget that. And, uh, and so uh, I was sort of leading worship, not, not a lot, but just... Partly, you know, but it's playing the violin, and and uh, so the the leader of the Toronto Jeremy uh, Sinat, I believe is his name, he spotted me. He, he knows about my musical background, so he invited me to play the violin. And then on this particular afternoon, he says, uh, "Would you just uh, go for it and and uh, join me and let's lead this thing?" And and uh, so I thought he'll be there with me. And all of a sudden, where's Jeremy? And Oh, you the leader? I'm like what? I I I I never done this like this, and I mean that worship the Lord, but not in a big thing like that. Thousands of people, but there it is. I'm stuck now, and I'm trying to. I'm panicking, almost like trying to get my charts and this and that and practice, and and uh, and then John and I come, and meeting's about to start. So he says. Oh, George, it's so good to see you. Are we going to have fun today? <laughs> and when he said fun, this is the first time I heard leader, Christian leader, to use that word. It's just fun. And I was so, all of a sudden, it just kind of exploded in me and relaxed. And it's like, oh, I guess so. I mean, never heard that word like this, but it brought peace to me. brought, you know, and so... So I'm, I'm start to lead, and all of a sudden, in the middle of this one song, I kind of heard this like, jam, 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 and it sounded like wild thing, like an old '60s song, <laughs> jam, and 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 yeah. So I I I I, ha I was so intoxicated by the moment, and, and so and then I thought we should do this song, wild thing. I felt in a wild mode like that, and I turned to the guitar player, and I said. He goes, not here. I go, yeah, right now, do it. Because he's like, a, he used to be a big secular rock star. And so he, he knew how to get the <clears throat> pedals. Yeah. I mean, the mood was already that way, but we just had to just push it a little bit. And so he got his guitar. And I just, wild king. I was Christianizing it and like, yeah. But I felt that mood, you know. And, and all of a sudden, all the baby boomers, they got electrified. I tell you, it was at least 2,000 baby boomers in the biggest conga line you've ever seen. Just all, and never forget that. Those are the days where all the rules were broken in my bringing, Christian bringing here. And we went to the freedom of the Lord. And did you know that that word fun is actually in the Bible? I've never knew that until you get to experience it. And it's, and it's we're talking about Purim, you know, the, the festival of Esther. We go to Israel uh, every year, and, and uh, usually around February, March is where we go. And, and that's that Purim festival. And it, all of Israel would go in the streets and celebrate. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and there it is in, in the Bible I've never, I never saw before. Uh, but there it is, you know, after the, the turnaround and the salvation came, 
to, to Israel, and one day they're going to be slaughtered, they're going to be killed, not just a few of them, but the entire Israel population in the whole region was going to be slaughtered. And the next day, the one who was going to do that to them, he slaughtered, he's in a, in a hollow, you know, he's hanging, and all of Israel is saved. Yeah. And, and we're talking about it tonight. Imagine, imagine if all of Florida is supposed to be killed tomorrow. And the fear and the, the, the scared and every imagine we all like going to be slaughtered. And the next day, those who was going to do that, they're, they're gone. And we are free. And we're saved. The joy. I mean, not just a few of us. Imagine a whole nation. A whole nation. Read the story. It's my, one of my favorite stories of redemption. That's what Jesus came to do. Yeah. Jesus came to reverse the curse. One day we're about to be wiped out, to be destroyed, to be, to be no more. And the next day, you know, and it says, it says in, in the city that uh, the, the central city is Azusa, exploded with joy. Come on, somebody. The city is, the city of Azusa exploded. This is what redemption does. This is what salvation does. And so I'm just, I'm just envisioning in a crazy way the whole city of Lakeland exploding with joy. Exploding with joy as believers are run to the street, rush to celebrate, to celebrate what Jesus has done, to celebrate his amazing salvation and turning around our destiny from divorce and destruction and sickness and cancer and everything. Now we are free. We are healed. We are restored. Our marriages are restored. Love is back. Joy is back. Come on, somebody. The city explodes with joy. The Jews was, it was all sunshine and laughter. Ha, ha. <laughs> sunshine and laughter. One day you're about to get divorced and it's sad and depression. Next day your wife is crying and is laughing and, and thousands of people joining with the, and, and is laughing. Yes. Whoa. They were all sunshine and laughter. They celebrated. They were honored. It was all over. All, every city of the country was every province, every city where the bulletin, which is the good news, the gospel is preached. People take to the street. Come on. Woo! To the streets in celebration, cheering and feasting. This is what Christianity is about. It's about cheering and feasting and celebrating the great victory of Jesus on the cross. One day we're supposed to be doomed and destroyed, and the next day we're the number one nation, the most celebrated people. We're the ones more filled with joy and laughter because we're saved by our Savior. Our families, our destinies, our, our children are saved, our grandchildren. We're all coming together. One day we're you know, set out to the gas chamber, so to speak, yeah. and to be destroyed the next day. We just party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and it's not a cheap party. I'm talking about salvation. Oh, Whoa! And it says, from that day, from that, okay, every, every time, and the Adar, the month of, which is kind of the end of February, right after, um, what's the, the love? Uh, huh? Valentine, right, right after Valentine, it usually happened that February in, 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 we're in Israel. And it says, just the, the month where, where the, the Jews got relief from their enemies. The enemy wants to destroy us, be it cancer, be it depression, be it divorce, be it physical death, like, like in Haiti, like Christians are being persecuted in so many places. India, just 200 people were, were being slaughtered while we were in India, in that one pro I mean, India is like 1.2 billion people. It's like huge. It's like, like 15 countries. And, and, and where we were very peaceful and, and wonderful, but it's still very rough. Woo! And look at this. Uh, this is the month where their sorrow turned to joy. Yeah. The sorrow turned to joy. The presence of God turns the sorrow into joy. Come on, somebody. Woo, the sorrow turned to joy. 
morning somersaulted. You all know what somersaults are? Just backward. Any of, any of the young people know how to do that? Don't, don't try it if you don't know how, but don't, yeah. Somersaulted. Somersaulted into a holiday for parties. Say parties. This is Christian spirit. N not drunken party with drugs and alcohol. I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord. Woo! Parties uh, and fun. <laughs> Say fun. fun. Now, this is not cheap fun. It's not promiscuous fun. We're talking about the joy of the Lord in a, such an ecstatic way. You're so light because you've been set free from the oppression and depression and discouragement and, and defeat. And now... You're like a hot air balloon. You lift it. Your spirit is lifting up, and you feel like fun because you're getting set free. Woo! Ho! Oh, fun and laughter. Ha ha. Come on. God is identifies not with Ishmael, but with Isaac. You brethren are like Isaac. Say Isaac. Can you translate Isaac in English? Laughter from Hebrew, Isaac, Isaac means laughter, he rejoicing and laughing. Listen, this is not just a name of a boy. It's, it's a name of a race. In that boy, in, in Isaac, a whole race was, was, was grew. It's, a, it's, a, it's the single most, I mean, how many holidays Israel had? They're all parties other than Yom Kippur and, and that, but all these holidays, a celebration of how great God is. Passover, all these celebrations. Passover is, is, you know, is feasting. All night they're feasting. They're not just, you know, being protected by the, from the, you know, with the blood of the lamb. But inside there's feasting. While the, the, the spirit of death is, is, is killing the, the firstborn of Israel. It screams everywhere. <clears throat> inside the Jewish homes is laughter, yeah. celebration, and feasting. Say feasting. feasting. Party. And, and laughter and sending and receiving of presents and giving gifts to the poor. Yeah. Christianity is about giving gift yeah. of life, giving gift of joy, giving gift of salvation. Yeah. Come on, we're carriers of salvation. Every single one of us, you yeah. could see it like a, you're an apostle of, of salvation for others, apostle of joy. Uh, one India area, pastor was telling me, I didn't even know that, but the most Christian area of India because Apostle Thomas went there and, and is, is part of the history of India. And that, that area is Christian, strong Christian because he went to the, to the kings and the priests and the rulers and led him to Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's what happened in my country, Bulgaria. We were like a, a pagan country but part of a Bulgarian Macedonia and two Macedonian apostles. I, I heard about them. Even the communists totally anti against God, but they, could, they did not, could not erase the name of the apostles. They gave us our alphabet, Apostle Cyril in Methodi. These are the two Christian apostles from Thessaloniki that got the vision of giving the gospel to, to Bulgaria and Serbia and the Slavic-speaking countries like Russia, and, you know, we all have similar languages, and they created an alphabet. Two guys, in order to have the Bible to read, we don't have anything to read. We never read because we don't have an alphabet. So this is the ninth century, and they created an alphabet and used that alphabet to translate the good news, the gospel. This is the entire mission of these two apostles, their brothers, Brother Cyril. That's where the Cyrillic alphabet is by the name of the older brother. And, and so they translated it. And being neighbors uh, to uh, Thessaloniki, to where I was born, Sophia, the capital, is like a three, four hours drive. So they brought the gift of the good news of the gospel to the Bulgarian king. Totally pagan country. But he was the first to read you know, nobody's ever read in the country because we don't have nothing to read. And he was, taught him how to read, and he read, and he got saved. 
I mean, you read the Bible, you get saved too. I mean, this is what the Bible does to get you saved. The truth sets you free. Woo! And, and, and uh, I, 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 this is big for me because I was born in communism by then, the communists, and we never seen Bible. Bibles were burned out and destroyed so the young people cannot see the word. And so when I got saved here in America, somebody donated anonymously Bulgarian Bible to me. I couldn't read this English. So I never forget, forget the first reading. I read the Bible and it, it, it transformed me. It touched me, the stories and everything. So I can imagine our king begin to read King Boris. And he, he received the Lord. He got touched. He got filled. And, he's, and they said, now you need to get in the water and de declare to the whole nation what happened to you. This is a visual outward sign that you're born again, that you receive Christ now. We got to get you to the water and baptize you. He goes, I won't go alone. I want my whole nation to join me in my joy. So he declared the day where he was going to baptize, and the entire nation came to the rivers with him. Can a nation be saved in a day? Can a nation, can the destiny of nation be turned around completely in one day? Yes, it happened to my nation. In ninth century, we read the word and, and became a nation in one day. Amen. Come on, somebody. Wow. Woo -ho! So I'm just believing together. Let's just believe that this nation of Florida, this nation of America, coast to coast, shall be saved. Come on, Come on shall be saved. Yeah. I'm just not exaggerating. We're shifting God is shifting America. God wants every young man to be saved, every young person, every adult, every teenager, every mom, every dad, every grandpa to be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, this is what we're living for. God is a God He can turn out the nation. Amen. Woo! And using every one of us for that. Come on, every single one of you. Uh, we are carriers of the gospel. We're the apostles of today. He wants to use us as, it, and, you know, and it, it, apostle doesn't mean you have to be in a big church or anything like that. But even just like Myrna right here, this dear, dear saint is great. My, my mom's best friend in Florida here for years, and she's been with us so many times to Bulgaria. And until recently, she was a youth pastor like you are, you know. And, and a fireball, apostle to, of joy, apostle of love, apostle of of, of the salvation. Proud of you. And she was healed, and now she's without crutches. So I'm excited. She came all the way to see me. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Come on. People are going to get touched tonight. Healing is going to take place.